Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Amy, if you didn't know, and I make Sims videos on YouTube. So uh, my second video ever is this video, which I lied and said it was gonna be the furnishing of my first video, which was some townhouses from the movie Nomeo and Juliet. But then The Sims 4 announced university is coming, so I thought I would talk about that instead because it's a lot more exciting and topical. Um, I was thinking of doing a reaction video to the trailer, but I actually thought it would be more fun to do some kind of build that could fit into the world of university. And it's actually interesting, I don't think we're gonna have sororities or fraternities in The Sims 4 University. It wasn't mentioned at all, wasn't shown at all in the trailer. That doesn't mean they're not in the game, but it's somewhat likely to me that we're not getting those. And I think that's okay. It's actually something that if you have get together, I've always thought you could pretty much do by yourself as long as you made a club, you gave it the name and you put like, you know, certain restrictions on it. Um, you could make your own sororities and fraternities and I'm not sure how the world is gonna work with the two separate campuses to start with. Um, but if, so cause I mentioned this whole thing about off-campus housing, interesting because I thought if that's a thing and you can kind of place any build down like you can in any regular world. You could put down a sorority or fraternity house if you really wanted to have those in your game. And then you could have them and you could just kind of, it would have to be something that you made yourself. But I thought if that's a thing, this would be a great house to do with that with. Um, so this is a very typical looking sorority house. I go to university, surprise, surprise, and I go to a university that does have Greek life. and. I actually drive by the what's called Greek Row every single day when I go to class because it's on the way to the building where I take all my classes. So I pass by all the sorority houses. It's funny, there's like two frat houses and then there's like seven sorority houses. Um, but not every sorority on campus actually has a house and I don't think every frat does either. I'm pretty sure we have more than two fraternities, but I wouldn't know. I'm not involved in Greek life at all. I actually used to be, I was in a sorority for like a hot minute there. Um, I, w I went to a different university when I started school and I did join a sorority for a very short amount of time. I was in a sorority for like maybe a month tops. I didn't even get officially initiated, if you even know what that means. It's weird because when you're in a sorority, you do the whole rushing recruiting process, you get picked for the one that you fit the best in, and you get to be, you shout, you get showered with love and attention. It's really awesome actually. And you meet all the girls and you, um, it kind of depends on, I guess, which chapter you're in, how things go, but I got uh, my my family within the chapter figured out, like, everyone starts off with a big sister who kind of takes you under their wing, and they have their own big sisters from past years, so you end up with, like, great grand bigs and stuff. I got all of that, and I got to go on a trip with my sorority, and I got like 6,000 free t-shirts before I ever was initiated, and I actually didn't end up getting initiated because I dropped out of the sorority before that ever happened. Uh, that's a long story. It's made up of several parts, um, mostly including a horror story of a roommate, which would be something I'm very willing to talk about on this channel because it's a doozy of a story. But not just that alone, but a couple other things led to me not wanting to stay there, and clearly I didn't stay at that university because I go to a different one now. But I dropped the sorority and I never got initiated, so really what that means for me is I got some of my money back from the initial down payment that you do have to make. Uh, it is very expensive to be in a sorority, and it is a lot more expensive to be in a sorority if you live in a house like this one because you do have to pay for the housing even if you're not actually living in it, I'm pretty sure. We didn't have housing on campus for the sorority that I was in, so we actually didn't have to worry about that at all. But there is something really exciting and like mysterious about sorority houses. I've always wanted to go inside the ones on campus now. Um, I just want to see what they look like and I I based a couple things with this house off of some stuff that I found online. I did a lot of research about a bunch of the most beautiful sorority houses in the country. Most of them are in the south. Um, I think I took inspiration from, I, I'm not going to try to remember what the chapter names were, but found a bunch of the ones that I wanted the look to go for the most online and then I looked up a lot of inspiration for the inside because as much as I know what an exterior of a sorority house looks like, I have no clue what the inside looks like. Um, I know that they're not as glamorous sometimes as you might think they are but they're always like pretty nice. Um, this one is definitely 
it's supposed to be like a nice mini mansion if you will so it has a lot of rooms inside there's a chapter meeting room there's a big old kitchen and there's like three different areas where you can study and do your homework and then there's a bunch of bedrooms um, I made a bunch of them two bedrooms like two beds per bedroom so technically this house can sleep I think like eight ten sims maybe um, I think there are seven bedrooms I, don't, I can't remember officially but I did make a couple different styles of bedroom those actually didn't make it into the filming of this video because the video footage was getting really long and they're not that important so I decided not to worry about them all that much as far as showing you you can see them in the screenshots at the very end but yeah so I was excited to build this especially because of university so that's really what I wanted to talk about today um, what are the things I'm most excited for definitely I freaked out with everyone else about the bathroom cubicles that's very exciting I am definitely ready to have that extra level of realism when it comes to our builds and I'm probably gonna have to go through every single build in my save file and update every single bathroom to have correct looking bathroom stalls which is gonna be great so that's exciting I also remember geeking out not only over the bathroom stalls but they had the really realistic looking like big ugly plastic toilet paper holders on the side and I got really excited about that because I've always felt like it looks dumb when I'm making a community lot and I have to use the actual the only toilet paper that we have in the entire game which is like definitely someone's toilet paper in their house that's kind of nice and it's on like a little metal toilet paper rod yeah we don't have that you know when you go to restaurants especially not in America I don't know about anywhere else I know other places don't have giant gaps in the stalls doors of bathrooms. I actually can't imagine that. Someday I'm gonna have to go see it for myself. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just weirdly comfortable with the idea that I can like somewhat see out of the bathroom stall. Sometimes I waste a lot of time in bathroom stalls when I'm at school because I really don't want to be in class. So I go sit in the bathroom stall for like 10, 20 minutes, definitely too, too long. My professor must know that I'm not just going to the bathroom, but it's not their business to ask, so it's never, I'm never gonna have to tell them. Um, most of my classes are three hours long because they're art studio classes, and art studio classes are always three hours long, which is ridiculous. Um, I understand why, because in a lot of art classes it takes a lot of time to get things done, but it's still a ridiculously long amount of time and I go insane if I'm actually in there for three hours without taking a break. So I definitely leave throughout my class and go be a bad student in the bathroom stall. But I've also done exactly what the sim in the trailer did, which is go and cry in the bathroom stall. It's very cathartic, you should try it. Mostly I do that at work. Uh, it's the only way I can get through some shifts once in a while. But other things that I'm really excited for in the trailer involve the bikes. Obviously, those look really awesome. My dad is a huge cyclist, so I'm actually excited to like make my dad in The Sims and then make him go on a bike. I think he'll get a kick out of that, so I'm probably going to show that to him. The bikes look really good. I am curious about how they're going to work, just like a lot of other people are, because obviously we don't have cars in The Sims 4, and we don't have any sort of transportation that really negate, like needs any sort of anything besides walking just the worlds are too small to need that sort of getting between things but actually I was thinking recently every world that they've given us has been a lot more open world than the worlds we initially got in the game like Willow Creek and Oasis Springs you know every neighborhood is somewhat open within a couple of lots and you can walk around them freely but those neighborhoods are pretty small and there's not much in them to do I mean especially in the residential worlds like Willow Creek and Newcrest and Oasis Springs there's nothing to do within these neighborhoods. I mean, a couple of them have those like secret lots that you can enter. But when you look at the worlds we've gotten recently, like Sulani and especially um, the Magic Realm, that's almost completely open world. Like obviously you still have to travel to go inside of a lot, but broomsticks were actually the first thing that I really feel like was some, somewhat similar to that idea of transportation besides just walking around and they're somewhat necessary in the magic realm I mean they definitely get you from one place to another more quickly than going in the little portals or anything else like that so I actually feel like the bikes might work something like that and that recently with the worlds we've been getting stuff like bicycles and cars might actually become more necessary or more integrated into the gameplay than they would be if every world was still like Willow Creek and all the rest of them. So I do think 
with bikes that it is actually quite a possibility that we might actually get cars in The Sims 4. And you know, when we got jet skis and stuff for island living, that everyone was kind of like, why do we have these? There's no point. But the oceans are pretty big, even if you're on different parts of the island. So I think the bikes are gonna work something like that. That gives me hope that the world is somewhat big, or at least a lot of it is explorable without having to go through a bunch of loading screens because I can't really see why you would need a bike or why your sim would have one besides aesthetic purposes, which could very well be the only reason we have them. And I kind of would be okay with that for screenshots alone would be fun. But I do think that they probably have more of a purpose if the, if the sim gurus finally decided to put them in the game. I'm also very excited for the new careers. Teaching especially is gonna be great. There's so much storytelling that can be done through different careers being added. And it's been great having that update with the um, employment agency where you can register yourself as a job that I've used it before. I've used it to make a sim say that they're a yoga instructor, even though we can't give that actual job to anyone in the game. But I'm really excited for the new careers. The robots look awesome. I didn't really play with robots in any other Sims game, so I don't have a ton of experience and I don't really remember anything about them, so I'm excited to go into that kind of blind. And what else is really exciting and new? There's so much that I can't even remember what I saw in the trailer. The new piercings are awesome. I'm really excited to give my sim self her nose piercing that she has deserved all this time. I've had a nose ring for a really long time and I can't even remember what my face looked like without it. So I'm really excited to give that to my sim self. And the eyebrow piercing looks really cool. I do wonder if there are any more than those that they just didn't have on any of the sims. But I do feel like they often put every asset they have into the trailers. They don't really hide anything from us on purpose. So all the people who are like, maybe there are septums and we just didn't see them. I kind of don't feel like that's going to be a thing, um, which is disappointing. But I do hope that just the fact that we have facial piercings at all now means they might put them in uh, another free base game update, possibly. That would be great. Um, other things from the pack that are really exciting looking, definitely the shower woohoo. Everyone's been waiting for that. Very excited about that. Talking about the build a tiny little bit, I wanted to initially go with like a marble, really classy looking interior, but I ended up liking the pictures that I found online of the sorority houses that had more of a just classy regular house looking vibe inside. A lot of them that had the regular wood floors with the fancy staircases looked more inviting to me, so I decided to go with that instead of the marble foyer and the fancy chandelier. We still have a chandelier in here, but it's not nearly as grand as I was kind of thinking of using. I also actually wanted to try and make this build base game only, and I didn't really decide that I was going to do that until I was already building the outside. The outside, I'm pretty sure, is 100% base game. I don't think anything about the exterior is anything but base game, which I sort of subconsciously started to do, and then once I realized I was doing that, I really tried to keep it that way. I'm pretty sure that it's all base game outside, but if it's not, I'm sorry, I apologize for lying to you. Um, I did that on purpose because I wanted more of my builds to be accessible to people, especially with the Nomeo and Juliet build that I already did on this channel. I used like every pack that exists for that build. Um, the inside, I ended up not going with 100% base game, but I thought that if you are at least able to get the outside of the build to look like it does, then that alone is exciting because you can always kind of redo interiors and that doesn't change much about the build itself. But I also tried to use as many base game objects as I could inside so that it is a little bit easier to have this build in anyone's game and to be able to put it down if all you have is the base game and university. I actually know the base game went on sale today for like 50% off and a couple of expansion packs and I think a couple game packs and I think spooky stuff are on sale as well. This is going to be uploaded after that point. I don't remember how long the sale goes on for, but people should definitely get the game while they can because University is the pack that everyone has been screaming about. So I know everyone's going to buy University over any other expansion pack right now. So it's smart of them to put the other ones on sale currently because that means they'll actually get sales of those before Christmas time. I think more people will get University for Christmas than they would get a different pack, especially if they're able to get one of them now. So, I was actually talking with a friend from class recently about The Sims, and she was saying that she never buys the packs full price, and I was like, that is a level of dedication to just self-respect that I don't have, because I 
almost never bought the packs on sale. I was always just too impulsive, too excited to get everything. I got into The Sims 4 a long time after it started, so I saw how many packs I was missing, and I definitely bought most of them full price. And now I buy them as soon as they go on sale at all, as soon as they exist. So I'm probably never gonna buy another pack on sale ever again. But that's okay. I have decided that that is the lot in my life that I'm going to pick and choose, and that's okay with me. But yeah, she was saying that she she was like, oh, I really want Island Living, but University is coming out. So yeah, everyone's really excited for University. I'm really excited that it's finally here. It's actually coming really close and really soon, so I'm so hyped for that. I'm actually gonna be done with my semester pretty soon. I think I'm gonna be done with it not quite right before the pack comes out. Um, one of my classes, my professor is from Scotland, so he actually goes home early in the semester. He doesn't feel like hanging out here until mid-December. So we have our last classes next week. My last class is next Friday, which is the 1st of November from when you're watching this and from when I'm saying this right now. Um, so I'm done with that drawing class, which is so exciting because that's my 8 a.m. class. So it's really hard to wake up for that class and we meet three times a week which I didn't understand why we did that until he told us that our class actually ends early now I understand still sucks still doesn't have any justification in my eyes I do have that class in the morning from when I'm recording this it's actually 12 30 in the morning right now because my time management is ridiculously bad but that class ends soon and then my other class that I go to campus for is ending I think the week of Thanksgiving. I think that's when we're trying to get the finals done. That class is a lot more, it's very different. It's actually a class where I work with Universal Studios in Orlando. We get to basically pretend that we work at Universal Creative and we get to create stuff for the park and we have to come up with a huge project. It's basically one huge group project because you get a bunch of people in your group and you all have different roles in this creation of a ride or an attraction and then we pitch all of the ideas to Universal Creative and actually get feedback from the people who work there. It's a really fun class, it's really stressful, it's a lot of work, um, but it's been really awesome. I'm glad that I had the opportunity to take it. So that class is ending sometime in November, probably around Thanksgiving, and that means that I actually don't have a class on campus that goes until the end of our semester. I'm pretty sure that it ends in December. Um, I do have two online classes that do go for the full length of the term, but those are online classes, whatever. <laughs> I don't treat them with the same level of respect, and I definitely should. One of them is pretty interesting. It is The Art of Walt Disney. So that one I am able to get through pretty easily, but the other class that I'm taking is called Art as Interface, and I still can't tell you from now until, from the point that I got that class and until now, I still don't know what the class is technically about, and it's ridiculously annoying. We end up watching a lot of movies which sounds like it should be really fun, but they're always movies about like documentary movies that I don't want to watch and they're never available online for free. I think that when the class was made, the syllabus was made with those movies in mind in the, the fact that they were available on Netflix, but they're not on Netflix anymore. I've tried to find them. And so this class expects me to pay for these movies just to watch them and be able to take one stupid quiz. So I haven't been watching the movies lately, which is kind of bad. I actually got really cocky a couple days ago because I was doing my homework for those classes. I was doing my Disney homework and then I decided that I might just try and wing one of the movie quizzes. It was about Frida Kahlo. I know kind of a lot about her already and so I thought I could probably get through that one okay. I ended up getting a 95 on that quiz and I didn't watch the movie at all. So I was feeling pretty confident, feeling pretty good about myself. And then I decided to take the other quiz, which was a completely different artist it was about Maya Lin. She designed the Vietnam War Memorial. I'm sure you don't care. But that quiz I got an F on because I didn't watch the movie and it was really hard to try and answer the questions without having watched it. The Frida Kahlo quiz was kind of easier because the questions were more about like her and her life. I already know some stuff about her, but then the other movie qu quiz was definitely more about the content in the movie, which I didn't watch. So that was kind of dumb of me. Uh, it brought my grade down quite a bit actually, but I tested a couple scores for future grades and as long as I do okay on everything else, I'll be fine. It's just, yeah, those classes, they're really hard to get through sometimes. Online classes can be 
it's just, you have to self-motivate so much. And I don't have a ton of motivation. If I don't wanna do something, I have a really hard time convincing myself to do it. So online classes are definitely a gamble. I feel like if you know that you can work on something, even if it's like the last thing on the planet you want to be doing, then yeah, you can take an online class and you'll be fine. But if you're like me and you can get the class in person, just take it in person. The problem with my classes is a lot of them are only offered online, so there's no way to take them in person and it just ends up being kind of screwing me over because I know I can't take online classes as well as some people can. But I'm glad that I have the opportunity to stay home a couple days a week and just do my homework either at Starbucks or at the comfort of my own home with my cat. But those classes definitely are harder to get through. I'm wondering if we'll have any sort of online classes for a university in The Sims because it's such a thing nowadays. I don't know if The Sims 3 had that at all. I don't think it did, but I also really don't think online classes were as much of a thing back then. I, they could have been. I was probably like nine, so I definitely didn't know anything about that. But yeah, online classes are such a huge part of taking classes at university these days. I know at least every single person who has taken a class, at least one class has been online for them. And there's tons of people who only do online classes because it works out better for their schedule. And I feel like The Sims 4 has been really good at implementing things that are really modern, like the whole becoming an influencer and having a YouTube channel on The Sims. I feel like they might actually incorporate something like that, and that would be cool. Um, that would be a great way to add just stuff to do online. And it would be nice because I, I feel like it would work out well because I imagine that going to class is going to be somewhat like getting a call when you have a job that you can work from home in The Sims 4. I feel like it might be like, okay, it's class starts in an hour. Are you going to go to class? Are you going to stay home today? Or are you going to work online? So that'll be interesting to see how that works out. I'm also interested, I hope that the majors that are listed in the description are not the only majors offered. I kind of doubt that that's the case, but I also don't have a ton of reason to be completely sure that we aren't getting content withheld from us, just to be honest. Um, so I do wonder if we're only going to be able to major in, I think it was biology, computer science, and art history, and I think villainy, but I do feel like that would be silly. I mean, those are... If, if we only got four majors, I feel like they would be a lot more general. They would be like math, English, art, athletics, something like that, because if you're only gonna give four majors, you wouldn't give super specific ones. So it might be a fear that's not really worth having, but it's something to think about for sure. I know that we saw a bunch of people doing paintings in the trailer and they were doing different paintings than the ones we already have in the game. So that's encouraging to think that you can just major in fine arts and maybe you can pick to major in art history. I mean, good for art history majors, but like that's a lot of writing and a lot of discussion posts and I already hate doing those as it is. So I don't really want to major in art history in real life and I don't want to major in it in The Sims. I do think that my video is coming to an end soon. I'm gonna probably cut off soon so that you can just relax, watch the screenshots at the very end. Again, the bedrooms, I didn't film any footage of that, so you can see all the bedrooms at the very end. A couple cute ones, we have like a gamer girl and a couple dorms that are, I thought they were cute, I gave personality. So you guys, well, look out for my video next week. It's actually gonna be my shell challenge for Simsy Shell. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and a great rest of your October. I think we're almost up on Halloween. So have a great Halloween, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week.